Hello and welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 21. This is an exercises video, so usual caveats apply. Uh, if you don't want to watch me doing exercises, skip forward to the next one or the one after. Um, if you do, I recommend, if you want to get this stuff into your head, trying the exercises yourself first before you watch me. Uh, it's totally optional. You can just ride along with me. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so we've just done module B, which is all about like practical stuff about how to write Rust programs. Um, and here are some exercises to bed that stuff in. The first one is about serializing and deserializing strings. Um, I should point out, I haven't done these exercises. I did briefly look over and check what they were so that I didn't embarrass myself too much, but um, hopefully I'll embarrass myself a little bit um, so you can see. Um, me fumble around, but anyway, so the first exercise is about serializing and deserializing strings. Um, and we have some code with some to do's in it. Um, and basically we want to try and make that code work and then we'll come back and look at those questions maybe after. All right. So here's the code. Um, and here's what happens when we run the tests. It says running zero tests and it complains about a load of stuff. What if we do? Maybe there are no tests. What if we do tell it to run? It panics saying it's not implemented. Okay, so let's have a look at the code. So there is a fetch data function that pretends to fetch some code from a, an API of some kind. And there's a um, struct called blog post, which has the same kind of structure as the JSON has here. Um, and it's debuggable, but nothing else. And then we've got a main method. So the main method says fetch some data and then somehow put it into this blog post object. Um, and by the way, this is a little, we may not have seen this before, but this is like a, a block of code. So the kind of return value, as in the last line of this that doesn't have a semicolon, that, that, whatever that value is, so if I put like a three here, that three would end up in post. Now that's not allowed because post is a blog post and three is not a blog post. So, and also there's no semicolon there. Um, and also that's an unreachable bit of code. But yeah, you can't return a three and put it into a blog post. So we need to return something else. But if we put something here, it will go into blog post. That's all I'm saying about that. Then we've got to print out the deserialized thing. So it's this blog post is already deriving debug. So we're allowed to do a print learn of it with this code on question mark to say, please print it out. Um, and then once we've done that, we want to turn it back into a string and then print out that string. So we've got a bit of code to write. So in order to turn something into JSON, sorry, convert something from JSON into um, into an object, we would normally use uh, serdy JSON from str. And then we can give it just a, I guess, a reference to data. And that is going to return a result so we need to like do something with the results. So I guess we can do some kind of, um, oh no, yeah, this return, this already returns a result. So what we can do is just do a question mark here. So the anyhow result, if we haven't talked about that already, um, is a thing that, uh, uh, it's a, it's a type, which is, uh, which is a, a, like a specialized, like form of result. Um, so it, it can return either this uh, unit type or an error. And the type of error that anyhow result gives you is an anyhow error. And the nice thing about an anyhow error is it's easy to convert most other types of error into an anyhow error. So if I do a question mark, um, it's going to immediately, if something goes wrong with that deserialization process, um, it's going to immediately return an anyhow error from this function. Um, okay, so it's complaining because... You can't do this. So the reason why, um, or the, the conditions that mean you're allowed to call from str on some piece of data and turn it into a type, which in this case is blog post. So Rust is kind of working out that the type that we want, the return type for, of, of from str here is blog post. It's just working that out because it can infer it from the context. And it's saying, well, that's no good. Blog post can't be deserialized. Um, so what we do to do that, is we give it the deserialize. We ask it to derive deserialize. And now it's letting me do it. And it's complaining that we're not using the blog post. Even though we kind of are using it, right? Because we're printing it out. 
I mean, if we printed out some other stuff, it might help it. So if we printed out post.id and post.title, maybe it'll stop moaning. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's run our code check that works. Yeah, so deserialized blog post, it, it did deserialize it correctly, but then it panics because we haven't done the second part. So the second part is to turn a thing uh, from a blog post into a string. So to do that, we use Serdy JSON to string. And we pass in post. I guess we're going to need a question mark again. And it should be a reference to that thing. Um, and again, it's complaining. I can't actually, I don't, uh, certainly doesn't know how to turn um, a, a blog post into a string because we haven't asked it to derive the serialize uh, trait. So basically, serialize and deserialize are just magic that means Serdi can do the thing. Now when we run it, we get exactly what we're supposed to get. Um, first of all, we deserialize that JSON into a blog post object and print it out. And then we serialize it again into um, a JSON string. And the uh, escaping in here is because it's a string that contains double quotes. Um, so I think that's it for this exercise. So I did, uh, it, it did automatic, my editor did automatically insert Serdy deserialize and serialize uh, use statement here. So that's how we got, got out of those things. And yeah, deserialize and serialize are basically magic that says um, just at compile time, just look at this blog post object and figure out how to serialize it and deserialize it. Worth noting that these deserialize and serialize are nothing to do with JSON, right? So this is any type of serialization that Serdy supports and then separately use Serdy's JSON understanding to serialize blog post. So we don't have to change blog post at all if we want to serialize as XML, say. We just need to use the Serdy XML um, dependency instead of the Serdy JSON dependency. So separation between this thing can be serialized or deserialized versus uh, please deserialize this thing as a particular format. So really cool, uh, really nice separation. Okay. So I think that was, I think that answers the exercise. Let's look at the hint to make it make doubly sure. Yeah, we need to derive serializable and deserializable. Hang on. No, we need to derive deserialize and serialize. That's wrong. Um, uh, and then that's it. Fine. Okay. So, um, why does main return an anyhow result? Well, so, uh, we've already talked about this, so let's introduce an error and see what happens. So if I make this not valid JSON by removing that quote, and we try and run it, what happens? So what happens is we end up with this error, basically saying this isn't valid JSON. And the what happened was um, fetch data succeeded, but then Serdi JSON Fromstra, um, which returns a result. Um, a Serdi result, I guess, um, which normally would return a blog post. That's what the T is here, because it's worked it out from context. Um, but this question mark means if it returns an error, um, immediately return that Serdi result. And anyhow result can be converted into from lots of things, including a Serdi error. So it got, we re the main returned that error, and then the the behavior of Rust when you return um, an error type from your main method is it prints it out. So that's what happened. Let's put it back. It's making me feel sad. Okay, so I think that answers that. Um, yeah. The anyhow result is very flexible, so you can convert into it. So that's basically what that's saying. Okay, so then the question is, what is this R hash thing? All right, so let's have a look at that. So they're talking about this. What is this R hash? Well, basically, uh, raw strings uh, in Rust are a way of saying, um, I don't want you to um, do much escaping inside this string. Um, so 
So that's what the R means. And then the hash means um, don't stop this string until you hit quote hash. So ignore these quotes, just treat them as actual quotes as part of the string. And Rust has this neat thing where you can say, you can put as many hashes as you like here. And then it says basically don't stop the string until you hit the same number of hashes after a quote later. So that means even if you've got a string where you need some kind of R hash inside it, um, or sorry, some kind of quote hash, say, then the string doesn't stop. You can see my editor's correctly highlighting it. Um, it doesn't stop the string just because you put a quote hash because you put these three hashes at the beginning. So then if we add three, eventually it will go wrong and we'd need to add another hash here or something. Um, but yeah, so uh, neat little system for having like arbitrary levels of nested string, literal literals inside strings. Basically, this R hash quote means start a string and don't stop it until you hit the quote hash. Um, and it don't listen to escape sequences like slash n and slash backslash. Instead, that the, if you find a slash n inside your string, it just means a backslash and an n instead of a new line like it normally does in a, in a Rust string. Uh, yeah, very convenient for JSON literals and regular expressions. Um, so optionally, R could be followed by symbols, which means like what I said. That's basically what I said. So here's here's their example. Um, if you've got a, a quote hash inside your string, you might need two hashes to make sure your raw string works. Okay, um, that was exercise 1.1.